Severe weather threatens Texas and Louisiana for your Thursday. Don't get used to the warm temperatures as we have bitter cold to start 2025. All this and more next at the Weather Farm. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah from the Weather Farm. We have a lot to talk about, especially about severe weather impacting Texas and Louisiana for our Thursday and the bitter cold that is set to strike the United States to start 2025. So let's dive right into the details and you can get the latest information for your particular location in this episode of the Weather Farm. As we begin our Thursday, we see an area of showers in north central Texas. That is going to be the starting point of our system that's going to move into eastern Texas on Thursday afternoon and generate the risk of severe weather. Out west, we continue to see relentless rain for the coast of Washington and Oregon and those significant higher elevation mountain snows impacting that region for our Thursday morning. Out east, we're under the area of high pressure, save a few scattered showers here in the Ohio Valley and then along the Gulf Coast. Nothing too significant as we begin the day after Christmas. By the time we get to Thursday afternoon, this is 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we start to see that line of storm starting to develop across southern Oklahoma into far northeastern Texas, stretching all the way down to the Gulf. Out west, we continue to see the precipitation move on shore, but the intensity has definitely lessened. So our focus now is going to turn to the, the threat of severe weather from Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, into southwestern Arkansas. This is one of the tools that we use here at the Weather Farm to assess the potential for severe weather. This is a hodograph. And what a hodograph tells us is we take the, the wind direction at the surface. So this would tell us that the winds are about 130 degrees from the uh, east-southeast uh, at the surface. One kilometer up, they're generally in the same direction. But two kilometers up, they've switched to the southeast. Three kilometers high, they're south, southerly winds. Four kilometers, five kilometers, and six kilometers. The further out we go, the faster the winds. So as we get out to five kilometers, we see that the wind is moving 20 meters per second. We get out to six kilometers, it's moving at a 30 meters per second rate. And what a hodograph tells us is when we see this circular uh, clockwise rotation of the wind speed as the wind speed changes direction with height. So here it's one direction, slightly different. If we keep going up in the atmosphere, the wind direction is changing with height. So when we see that clockwise rotation, uh, that's an indication that there is spin in the atmosphere. The greater this spin, we measure in terms of shear. So you may have heard me talk about the shear. So we look at the zero to six kilometer shear vector. And we measure that to determine the amount of rotation in the levels of the atmosphere. All of these things come into play to determine what, where we think uh, severe weather might be happening for our weather. So when we look at this on a map, we put all the hodographs together. That's what all these small circles are in the little uh, directionals. We also measure the surface base cape, the amount of potential energy in the atmosphere. So we see that by th Thursday afternoon, it's southeastern Texas that has the greatest chance of convective potential energy available for thunderstorms or a possible tornado. But by the time we get to 6 and 7 o'clock in the evening, that intensity has weakened. So again, we're going to watch this area of southeastern Texas and even far southwestern Louisiana for the greatest potential for our Thursday of having uh, discrete uh, cell thunderstorms and the possibility of tornadoes. Not to say that elsewhere in that line you won't see thunder or lightning. We just won't have the potential for the discrete cells or the super uh, cells to develop into possible tornadoes. And it's one of the reasons why the Storm Prediction Center has put this area under a slight risk of severe weather for our Thursday. We see marginal uh, risk outside of that. We even see a slight risk as far north as uh, Cape Girardeau, stretching over to 
Memphis into most of Mississippi for our Thursday. But it's going to be this area that we're going to be focused on. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has given a 5% chance of tornado development within 25 miles of any point within this area. So again, this is where we're going to put our focus for Thursday for the greatest chance of severe weather and tornadic thunderstorms. If these storms come together and form more of a line rather than discrete supercells, the tornado threat's going to be much lower. Um, but it's something that we're going to have to watch and monitor throughout our Thursday. Stay tuned to your local weather for the latest information. I wouldn't be surprised as we get closer to down to the Gulf that we see an area of maybe 10% chance of tornado by the time we get to Thursday afternoon. We look at this line by 7 p.m. It has congealed into one single line. That's why I think that the threat will be done by 6, 7 o'clock at night. These storms will have lost their available uh, energy to develop into discrete supercells, and instead they will have congealed into a line of storms stretching through Arkansas into Texas into far western parts of Louisiana. In terms of rainfall for our Thursday, this is, takes us through Friday morning at 7 a.m. Where you get under the heaviest thunderstorms is where you're going to see the most rain. So we're going to see widespread one to two inches across far northwestern parts of Louisiana, southwestern uh, Arkansas, northeastern Texas, and southeastern Oklahoma. We're, we may see heavier amounts down here along the coast, but again, it's going to de determine if you get under the right thunderstorm for that to happen. By the time we get to Friday morning, those heavy thunderstorms have moved out. We may have a rumble or two of thunder across Tennessee into Mississippi, but the threat for severe weather is not going to be as extreme as it was on our Friday. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has a marginal risk even further south into Louisiana and Mississippi on our Friday if we don't expect significant severe weather across this area. Looking back out west, in terms of that rainfall with the uh, atmospheric river coming on shore, by the time we get through the weekend, we're going to have another one coming through on Saturday. We're going to see widespread 5 to 7 inches, localized 10 inch plus amounts along the coast. As we move inland, that's going to be more in the snow, especially in those higher elevations. We're still going to see 1 to 2 inches of liquid precipitation. That's going to amount to 2 to 3 feet of snow. In fact, we see this here with our snowfall map. Those pinks represent three to four feet of snow. The purple's one to two feet. And this is really where the snowfall is going to happen through the weekend. East of the Rockies, we're not going to see much snowfall, but the bulk majority is going to be out west where we're going to see the significant snowfall. That's because we're going to have above normal temperatures across most of the eastern two-thirds of the United States for our weekend. But let's put all of our weather maps into motion. So again, we're going to start, we're going to watch this development of storms across Oklahoma and Texas moving into Louisiana. We watch the Pacific Northwest for another atmospheric river to continue to pelt that area. This line of storms does continue to move east. We do get a little bit of moisture here across Michigan for our Saturday into Sunday. There's that snow that could clip Minnesota. And we watch, again, as we move towards New Year's Eve, Another system potentially moving its way across the southeast through Tennessee and the lower Dixie Valley, bringing heavy rain for that area. Out west, we continue to monitor the snowfall across the Idaho, Montana, and Colorado. As we watch a low start to dip here across the central plains on our New Year's Eve, it will bring rain as temperatures will still be very warm, but we do see those colder temperatures starting to make their way into the central plains and northwest by the time we get to New Year's Day. As we begin the first couple of days, we continue to see more rain and snow out west. We do see a little clipper system clipping the northeast as by the time we get to January 2nd. Speaking of those warm temperatures, we're going to have widespread 50s and 60s, even 70s along the coast. We will be reaching mid-80s in far southern Texas. We look across this map, we don't really see a lot of cold air. We see 30s and 40s across the Intermountain Rest. We're going to see 40s into the North Dakota, you know, maybe near freezing along the Canadian border. 
20s across parts of Maine. No real significant cold weather. The same thing will hold true for Sunday, albeit a few degrees colder, especially here in the Northeast. We're going to see temperatures near uh, about 10 degrees above seasonal norms. But we look north into parts of Saskatchewan, we start to see colder air making a presence and spilling into North Dakota. And those eight, mid 80s that were in far southern Texas, they've been pushed further south. We have generally 70s and 80s to end our Christmas weekend. As we end 2024, we're going to see that low that's going to make its way out of the Rockies. Again, this isn't normal. Most of our systems do dive out of Canada this time of the year. So we're seeing this pattern of low after low coming out of the Rockies and making their way across the United States. We have a pretty zonal flow to end 2024. But it's this system, this area of this trough in the atmosphere at the 500 millibar level that starts to dig the first couple of days across the eastern half of the United States. We see a high pressure building towards Greenland. We also see a high off the coast of Alaska. That's going to allow colder air to spill into the eastern half of the United States for the first two or three days of January. We're going to see a brief warm-up about the 4th through the 5th, and then we're going to see another reinforcing jolt of Arctic air waiting for the eastern half of the United States. In terms of our temperature anomalies, this is the 850 millibar map. Again, to end 2024, it's going, to, it's going to support that pattern we just saw on the 500 millibar chart. Warmth across the eastern half of the United States to end 2024. We start to see those colder temperatures starting to filter in across the Canadian provinces and then into the northern plains and into the Rockies. That starts to move east on our New Year's Day with the core of the cold still across parts of British Columbia and Alberta into Montana. We're going to get that first jab of below normal temperatures, but out west we see ridging happening, bringing above normal temperatures again as that cold air moves east. A second, uh, more potent batch of Arctic air builds across the Canadian provinces as we enter the 4th and 5th of January. All of this colder than normal temperatures is supported by the Climate Prediction Center, who's issued a below uh, normal outlook for the 2nd through the 8th of January for most of the eastern half of the United States. The far no north New England temperatures will be above normal there. Out west, um, as we have that trough digging across the eastern half, we're going to have ridging out west. That's going to bring above normal temperatures for those areas. We thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm. Joining us again in a couple days as we close out 2024 and get a better look at what's going to lie in store for us in 2025. We hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon.